Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back with five super easy and affordable spring DIYs. Some of these projects can be a transitional into summertime as well. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it. That always helps out my channel. And I love hearing from you guys down in the comments of which project was your favorite. Now let's get right into it. For the first DIY today, I'm gonna to be starting with this framed piece from Dollar Tree. I am only gonna be using the frame portion, so I'm just gonna be popping out the back of butterfly picture of it. It was really easy. I just used my thumbs to press it out. Then I'm gonna be painting the entire frame of this piece with a folk art acrylic matte paint in the color Maui Sand. And it's just like a really dark gray. And I did do the front and back of this piece so that it looks completely finished. And then once that was all dry, I did wanna add a little bit of distressing to this. So I took some of my ivory colored chalk paint from Waverly and I really messily painted this around all of the edges and then whatever was left over on my brush, I just dry brushed that over the entire piece to give it a rustic distressed look. Next, I'm gonna be using this scrap piece of wood and it is seven and a half inches by one inch and I'm painting the entire piece with my ivory colored paint. Since I want this entire piece that I'm creating to be kind of distressed looking, I'm taking that same Maui sand color that I used earlier and I'm using that to distress this piece of wood. And I'm just dry brushing the color pretty much wherever I think it would look nice, mainly around all of the edges and then just taking whatever was left over in the middle. For the flower pots that I'm gonna be using, it's gonna be these ones from Dollar Tree. I am using two different packs of them, so there will be six of them total. There'll be two larger pots and then four smaller ones, and I'm painting each one of the pots with my ivory colored paint. I wanted to have the words flower and shop on my piece, so I'm using these unfinished wood letters, and these ones I believe are from Michaels. I'm painting each one of the letters with my folk art matte acrylic paint in the color Vintage Tea Rose. And then placing the letters on my piece of wood, just getting them all centered and spaced out the way I want them to be before I use hot glue to attach each one of the letters. It was then time to start putting everything together. I'm gonna to be having the flower pots on the bottom of my frame, so I just placed those where I wanted them to be, got them spaced out the way I wanted, and then I started hot gluing each one of the pots down. I then used hot glue on the top wood piece that says flower shop, and then I attached that to the very top of my frame. I thought it would be really cute if I added some Spanish moss on the inside of each one of my flower pots. So here I'm just hot gluing some of that Spanish moss in the pots. It can look a little messy, but once I had the Spanish moss all glued in, I did take some scissors and trim it up just a little bit so that it looked a little bit more put together. For the flowers that I'm using in my pots, it's these really tiny pink ones. These ones are from Michaels, but you can get flowers like this at pretty much any craft store. So I'm just cutting them down so that they're a little bit easier to work with to place in each one of my pots. And then I'm using some hot glue to attach all of the flowers in each pot. Here is the piece all finished, a really easy and affordable project for spring, and you can even use this one in your summer decor as well. Now moving into DIY number two. For this one, I'm starting with this unfinished wood round, and this one is from Hobby Lobby. I usually get these in a pack of, I believe, five, and I'm using a paintbrush to apply my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. Once I had a good amount applied, I would then use a paper towel to wipe away the excess. Then I'm gonna be using this unfinished wood word cutout that says welcome. This one is from Joanne Fabrics and I'm painting it with my ivory colored chalk paint from Waverly. I'm then using hot glue on the back side of the word cutout to attach it right in the center of my wood round. 
I thought it would be really pretty to add a pop of color with these paper flowers and these ones are either from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And then I'm also going to be adding some greenery pieces that I had in my craft stash. This is a good way to use any extra pieces that you might have laying around. And I first started by hot gluing some of the greenery pieces on the top left hand side of my sign. And then once I had a couple different ones of the greenery attached, I then started attaching my flowers. And then just kind of worked with it. I added different greenery pieces and different flowers. I did end up just using the rose flowers and I went with the dark pink, a white, and then a lighter pink color. You can see here that I added one of these like daisy flowers, but I ended up pulling that one off and just sticking with the roses. After I had all of my flowers and greenery attached, I then needed to add a hanger. And for the hanger, I'm just using two strands of jute and I'm hot gluing them along the back side of my sign. Here's the sign all finished, a really simple and easy piece that's great for spring and can be transitioned into summertime as well. Now moving into DIY number three. For this project, I'm gonna be starting with one of these unfinished wooden crates from Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing to it is just painting the entire thing with my ivory colored paint. I'm also going to be using four of these wooden beads, but these beads are flat on both sides. And I believe these ones are from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut to stain all four of the beads. I would just apply the stain with a paintbrush and then wipe away the excess with a paper towel. I'm using four of these wooden strips. The longer ones I have cut down to six and a half inches and the shorter ones I have cut down to five and a half inches. And as you can see on all four of the strips on one side, I have them cut at a 90 degrees. And I'm painting all of the strips with my ivory colored paint. I'm using one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree, which you'll see later on that I ended up needing two of these wood planks but I'm staining it with my walnut wood tint from Folk Art. And then once I have that stain, I set that aside and I'm gonna start assembling my wooden crate. I'm attaching all of the wood strips that I painted on the inside of my wooden crate using some hot glue. I attached the two longer ones on the back side of the crate and then the two shorter pieces I attached on the front portion of my wood crate. As I said before, I ended up adding a second wood plank piece from Dollar Tree and I ended up cutting the first one down to five inches in length and then obviously I cut the second piece down to five inches as well and then I stained that the same color because this is going to be my roof. And then once those were stained, I just added some scrap pieces of wood along the backside to attach both of the wood plank pieces together. Then it was time to add the wood plank pieces to the tops of all of my wood strips and I did that just using some hot glue and then just making sure that the wood plank was centered. I then added the wood beads that I stained on the very bottom of my crate using some hot glue. Then to add some detail, I'm going to be using some of this green and cream color ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And I'm a little bit out of the shot here, but I'm just cutting it down a little bit so that it's thinner for me to work with. And then once I have a good strip of it cut out, I'm then going to be cutting the ribbon into small little triangle pieces to create a banner to go along the front of my wood crate. Next, I'm attaching a strand of jute along the front of my wood crate, kind of in like a swag, and I'm just using hot glue to attach it. And this is going to be the base for my banner that I'm creating. So once I have the jute all added, I'm then going back and hot gluing my little triangle pieces that I cut out along the banner. And I am leaving a little bit of space in between each one of the triangle pieces, and I ended up using six total. Now it's time to fill the crate and I'm using some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. And then once I have that added, I'm gonna be adding my flowers and I'm using 
some little white ones that I had in my craft stash. These ones are from Hobby Lobby. I did cut them down a little bit so they would fit really nicely inside of the crate. And then I'm using some of these small pink ones and these ones are from Joanne Fabrics that I picked up last year. So I just added the pink ones in between the white ones and then along the back of the crate, I just added some extra greenery pieces. This is the piece all finished. I think it turned out so cute and it's the perfect accent piece to add to your spring decor this year. Moving into DIY number four. For this one, I'm gonna be using one of these unfinished wooden birdhouses from Michaels. And originally, I wanted to use my walnut wood tint to stain the roof, but then I realized that some of the wood didn't look very good where you could see like some of the glue where it was put together. So I decided to just paint over that and the color that I'm using for the roof is called Castle by Folk Art and it is a chalk paint. And then I also painted the base of the birdhouse that same color. I then painted all of the main parts of the house with the folk art chalk paint in the color Sage and I did only have to do one coat of this paint. And then for the trim around the windows, I used my ivory colored paint from Waverly. And then I also painted the door that same ivory color. For all of the steps and then the rails going up the steps, I thought it would look really nice if I painted them black. So that is what I'm doing here. And I did use a smaller paintbrush so that I wouldn't get any of that black paint onto the ivory color paint. And then once I had that all painted, I decided to paint the doorknob that same black color. I then have these two little scrap pieces of wood and I'm gonna use these as window boxes to go underneath the windows on the birdhouse. And I thought it would be good to keep with that black accent color. So I'm just painting those black. I then thought it would be really cute to add these two wooden flower pots to my birdhouse. These ones are from Hobby Lobby, but you can get similar ones right now at Dollar Tree. I'm painting both of the pots with the ivory colored paint. Then once that paint was dry, I used some hot glue to add in some Spanish moss to both pots. And then for the flowers that I'm gonna be using, they're these really pretty bright pink ones, and these are from Michaels. I cut three little flowers for each pot, and then I just hot glued all three flowers into my pot. I then thought it would be really cute to add a string of jute around each one of my pots. So that's what I'm doing here. I just tied the jute around and knotted it in the front and cut off the long pieces. And again, I did that to both pots. I then used hot glue to attach both of my pots to the front of my house right next to the stairs. Then it was time to add my window boxes. As you can see here, I'm using hot glue to attach both of the boxes under both windows. Once I have those attached, I use some hot glue to attach some Spanish moss to the top of my boxes. And then inside of the Spanish moss, I thought it would be really cute to add some more flowers. But instead of using the really bright pink ones, I went for ones that were a little bit lighter in pink because I thought the two different tones would be really cute. So here I'm just cutting the flowers down individually so that they're easier for me to work with and I'm just hot gluing three of those little flowers on each one of my window boxes. I had this long pole block scrap piece of wood in my stash and I thought it would be so cute to add the birdhouse to it and it is eight and a half inches long and I wanted it to be the same color as the base and the roof of the house so I'm painting it with the castle colored paint and then I'm also gonna be using this square wood block piece. This one is from Michaels and you can get it for 99 cents. And I'm painting that with that same castle color. It was then time to attach everything together. So as you can see, I'm using hot glue to attach the pole right in the center of my square block piece. But then to make sure that it stayed in place, I'm using a wood screw and then just screwing those two pieces together and then hot gluing my birdhouse on the top of the pole. 
This is the piece all finished. This really did not take a long at all and I think it turned out great. But what I really love about this one is it gives you the idea of doing a pedestal birdhouse, but you can do the house in any kind of color and use any flowers that you want to really make it your own. Now moving into the last and final DIY today for DIY number five. I'm first starting with this block piece from Hobby Lobby and I'm painting the entire piece with my ivory colored paint. I'm also going to be using these three unfinished wood tulip picks from Dollar Tree and for two of them I wanted them to be a little bit shorter and since the wood stem on these is really thin I was able to just wiggle them back and forth and break it off instead of cutting it and then for the two shorter ones I'm painting both of those tulips with this pink color and then for the longer tulip I'm painting that with a yellow color. Then for the stems for all three of my flowers I'm using the color Spanish Moss by Folk Art and then once the paint has all dried I thought it would be really cute to add some detail around all of the edges of the tulip. So I'm taking my ivory colored paint from Waverly and I'm just very lightly painting around all of the edges of all three of my tulips. Next, I'm using my drill to drill three different holes into my wooden block. I did one in the center towards the back of the block so that I'm able to place my wooden stem pick inside of that hole. And then for the other two, I drilled on each side of the wood block more towards the front. Then to make sure that each one of the stems stayed secure inside of the hole, I put some pot glue in the hole and then placed the stem in the hole. Of course, I was gonna add something to the front of my block. So here I'm just spelling out the word tulips with these little wooden blocks from Hobby Lobby. I made sure that they were centered on the front of my block and then just hot glued each one of them down. Then for the last step, I added a piece of jute to the back of my block and then I wrapped it a couple times in a few different directions above the word tulip and then also below the word tulip and then I just secured that jute piece along the back side once I had enough along the front. And this is the piece all finished. It's the perfect tabletop or tiered tray piece for this spring. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And as always, I would love to hear from you down in the comments to tell me which project from today's video was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.